So I'm scribed on here. Now I'm ready just to bandsaw that out and grind it to profile. And I'll lay this back on here, fine tune it, and then transfer my holes. Okay, I've gotten it uh, profiled and I was just taking off some of that mill finish it doesn't take long um, with these ceramic belts I do uh, really enjoy using them they last that's just an old cargo magnet I picked up at Harbor Freight just uh, this gets hot when I'm flattening it when I'm flattening it on that platen so the magnet is just to one help me hold it and two doesn't burn my fingers uh, so I don't have to dunk repeatedly but I've gotten this to the point um, I feel like it's relatively flat and really the only area um, I'm worried about keeping parallel on this knife is this area right up in here there will be a flat um, just after our plunge cut and before our handle material and that is just to give me a reference to grip so I can drill my holes through the handle material because this tang will be tapered because the blade is going to lose just an awful lot of weight going forward as we bevel this down to a cutting edge um, so though it's starting out pretty thick um, it's going to go on a weight loss program really fast so we're going to go over to the bench again and I'm going to mic this and just see what my average uh, thickness is now and um, go from there Okay, so we're going to take our calipers here, and we're just going to check the average thickness of what we've got going on here now. After getting that mill scale off, 150 thousandths, 150, and then, although it really doesn't matter out here at the tip, it's 150 and about a half. So, good enough. Um, at this point... I'm going to do two things. I'm going to go ahead and clamp this back. Using this as a drill guide, I'm going to go ahead and get my holes drilled. And then this is to the point where I can put layout blue around the perimeter and strike my lines. Now on this knife, um, although this is 8th inch stock, you see it's 25 thousandths over, which is fine. All I want to do is get a flat established that I can work off of and the actual thickness of the blade stock I don't really take that much uh, into consideration uh, in this style of build if I were doing one with a slotted guard of course you know I have to get you know more precise and we do uh, when we're building that style of guard but this knife will have no guard um, so a couple of things uh, on the design that I'm taking into consideration um, that I have found like my favorite little cook's knife here uh, this this Chinese design if you look at the handle um, it's rather round and that has been a problem for me in the past because this knife being so tall if I'm going down through like sweet potatoes uh, something pretty firm this knife unless I grip it really tightly is going to try to roll on me and I don't like that 
and it's that round shape that is conducive to that. And especially if my hands are a little wet, it can be a challenge. I find I have to come up here and grab the flat of the blade to keep it from twisting or torquing sideways, which kind of defeats the purpose of having a handle on it, now doesn't it? So, um, one of the things I'm taking into consideration is the handle geometry. I want the handle to be flat, to have a nice flat to where the user can grip this and that twisting motion is going to be somewhat eliminated. Um, plus, we're going down, uh, when we strike our twin lines on this for the cutting edge, those lines are only going to be 30 thousandths apart. So our cutting edge starting from back here as we bevel in is going to end up being about 30 thousandths thick. So the knife is going to lose a lot of weight from here forward and because of that I decided I am going to put a taper on this tang starting up here where the front of the handle is going to be and just tapering back to maybe a third of its original thickness and I think it's going to add to the looks of the knife and to the balance of the knife. The heaviest section of the blade is going to be right here where we're going to stay kind of um, kind of at this hundred and fifty thousandths thickness we may lose a little bit when I profile this down to finish polish but yeah this uh, right now this is a heavy blank but it uh, it won't stay heavy so on the micarta handle um, I got my sheet of micarta in from pops and it was right on time and I brought this knife into better light than the first video and I'm just turning it so you can see the grain and it really shows up to me right now and I don't know if you can see that but this is really pretty stuff and it, uh, it happens kind of by accident now they do use uh, the linen has a whitish nature and I'm gonna show you the backside of this square foot of my cart I got now this is the front side and the side that will go into the blank is this side so you can kind of see some of the white linen um, just at this very bottom layer before they uh, force the the phenolic resin into this stuff to uh, to roll it into this type of sheet so it does have a nice striking appearance and we can get a lot of knife handles out of this and uh, once again pops um, one of the other things I like about that company when you order on their website it will estimate your shipping um, and then when they box your order up, they'll actually weigh it and adjust the shipping rate, which is a nice touch. It doesn't add up to a whole lot, but here's a shipping refund, a refund of $1.56 um, off the original shipping, which is nice. Uh, a lot of companies would just simply, they're going to charge you what the website charges you. And Pops just uh, goes that little extra step. Another good reason to deal with them. So we're going to get started getting our holes transferred and then we're going to go over the surface plate and we're going to lay out um, lay out our grinds and uh, that is about the only area where these machinist tools come into play if I were doing a guard with pins we'll get exact and ream those two holes to size uh, but other than that uh, you can kind of play it loose these are handmade knives not so much machine made and uh, when I drill for the micarta I'll be relying, because of the taper on the tang, I'll be relying on a flat that I will leave just past the, the plunge cut here for the bevel and clamp on that to hold me perpendicular uh, while I drill my handle material. Then I always go back uh, after I've drilled them and I just run a, a bit, just a, a couple of thousandths larger than an eighth inch. I'm going to be using eighth inch pins to allow epoxy to get around that pin as it goes through the handle and you, something you really can't see I did it here um, but there is epoxy surrounding each pin just to hold it in place a little bit better never had pin slip on me so we're going to get started um, and looking forward to watching this knife lose weight and get closer and closer to completion so we'll come back when we're uh, ready to lay out our grinds all right, I have my holes transferred in, and I drilled the uh, 3 16 hole for my pin on my 3 16 push stick.
to help me in uh, tapering that tang. So now the areas we're going to be concerned with um, where we get exact is this back edge where we're going to scribe twin lines back here to show where our tang taper is going to end up and really um, the only part of those two lines we're actually going to be focused on is the very point back here so we're going to meet our layout right back here at the point and then we'll get a little thicker as we go this way just a little bit but um, that is going to get everything kind of tapered down evenly and we won't go slanting if we if we try to meet that thickness all along of course that being at an angle it, it's going to be off so um, you have to take that into consideration and then the other area it's going to be our cutting edge and we scribe nice heavy lines in this stuff so we can follow even after the layout blue is gone and then for this knife it's rather long so I'm going to do a center line all the way down just to keep me straight as I taper in that little visual reference um, it really helps so we're going to let this dry and go over to the surface plate get this stuff scribed okay so I'm starting with 150 thousandths thick stock I want um, the bevel to come down leaving thirty thousandths in between to plunge into my cutting edge so I have set this for sixty thousandths that's going to leave me the space I need so I'm going to scribe these two lines first So you can see that's really going to come down to a nice fine cutting edge. Um, takes a lot of steel off, but I still want this spine back here uh, for strength. So now I'm going to reset my gauge. Uh, one, I'm going to do at 75 thousandths to give me a center line to follow here. And then I'll set for uh, laying out my tang taper. Okay, so I've gotten my center line scribe down to guide me as I taper from here to the point and then I want to go down to about a, a third of the original thickness as we get back to the handle so that was just setting the height gauge for fifty thousandths and scribing two lines and that's going to leave fifty thousandths in between or a third of the original thickness I think that is going to make this knife um, lose the weight and become something that's still relatively light yet strong um, so we're gonna get started grinding here in just a few minutes